At age seven, I felt a tickle between my legs. That thing mom called my wee-wee. <laughs> I especially felt tickly looking at fashion models in the New York Post and the New York Times. It was a delicious, splendiferous sensation. If I rubbed softly, the wee-wee grew. It helped to think the fashion model was my governess, and she was punishing me for being very naughty. <laughs> Spanking me with a hard bristle, bristles of a brush, for example. The wee-wee grew and grew. It got so big, explosion of light in my whole being. Wow! Nothing came out, of course. I was only seven. This was ecstasy. But I did not deserve this, I thought. This was bad. I was Jewish. Not religious, but I said to myself, I should not do this bad thing. At age eight, I picked up courage to ask Linda Gordon if I could carry her books home from school. She lived on Bay Parkway, many blocks from PS 101. I felt this ticklish, splendiferous sensation. Did not know what it meant or what to do, but I dreamed about Linda and soon felt the rising of the moon. At age nine, Sarah Weiss, age 10, moved on to Bay 34th Street, blonde goddess child from Lithuania. All the boys on the block stared at her, including me. No one dared approach her. I dreamed about Sarah, still do, and the rising of the moon. At age 12, went to first co-ed party. We played spin the bottle. When Helen Elgard spun the bottle, it pointed straight at me. She cried, hooray, approached me. But I asked for a compass to prove the bottle was not pointing at me. <laughs> Helen was mortified. Just thinking about this mortifies me to this day. <laughs> at age 12 or thereabouts, I noticed a strange white substance squirting out when I did this forbidden bad act of touching. This convinced me it was bad. Okay. At age 19, home from Cornell, Lorraine, wife of a police officer, act flirtery when I schmoozed with her at Alan Cohn's candy store. She especially act flirtery when slowly eating chocolate banana split sundaes. The way the whipped cream dribbled down her chin, I don't know, I couldn't help thinking about it. I dreamed and felt the rising of the moon. <laughs> One summer evening, Lorraine asked me to go for a walk with her. As darkness fell, she pulled me into a dark storefront on 86th Street. Her perfume made me dizzy. Arabian myrrh began kissing me slowly with her tongue on my lips. The moon rose. Then to my horror, the moon collapsed. <laughs> I did not say anything to Lorraine, but this wet, sticky stuff trickled down my thigh. I knew the New York City police were alerted and Lorraine's husband was in the patrol car, searchlight blinking. Lorraine must have sensed something was up or down as she stopped ordering banana split sundaes at Alan Cohn's candy store. <laughs> At age 21, Brooklyn College, Kareem, an American literature class, sat in back of me. We went for long walks on the quad, had long talks about Longfellow. <laughs> Eventually, Kareem admitted that she fell in love with the back of my neck. <laughs> but talking led to smooching. First time I smooched, couldn't stop thinking about it. She couldn't stop thinking about me. Why, I have no idea. But we spent the next five years arguing about who was chasing who. Last time I saw her was getting into a cab, a dark suit in the recess of the cab on Fifth Avenue and 32nd Street. I waved to her, Kareen, where are you today? Will I ever know? Maybe we'll meet in the afterlife and continue the argument. At age 25, I met Kathy while hitchhiking in the Black Hills of South Dakota under Mount Rushmore under the nose of George Washington. She was traveling with her mom, dad, and siblings. We shared a buffalo burger with french fries, lots of ketchup. I was on my way to San Francisco, but when I got there, couldn't stop thinking about her. Rode her, called her. I hitchhiked back to Philadelphia as Kathy was still living with her parents. We dated. She left her parents. I felt responsible for this rupture. She went to study at the Art Students League in Philadelphia. 
But you know what? We began arguing about who was chasing who. We hitchhiked to California, demonstrated against the Vietnam War, demonstrated against each other. This was deja vu all over again. Yes, later there was Barbara, Blanca, all bees, but the moon never really rose. Then I met Lady Di at Emily Glenn's Bohemi hangout, spouting of the Woyeds at 77 Barrow Street. She had too much red lipstick, but a violin case. I was smitten. Poetry and the violin. We went to Penny Feathers with the poets. She invited me, free comps, to her concert at Avery Fisher Hall, Mollis Fifth, then O'Neill's Balloon for dinner with Joe and John DeMassey musicians, with whom she had traveled with youth orchestras to New Zealand, Japan, all those wiggly places. 17 years her senior, and I had hardly made it to pass Canada. No way but forward. We are here now, living together as hubby wubby and wife. We argue about who chased who, but these arguments are less frothy as we age. Life is good. The seven stages of love. One, spanking with a hard, bristly bush, brush by an imagined governess. Two, splendiferous tickle. Three, explosion of light. Four, bad. Five, humiliation of the compass. Six, who is chasing who? Seven, and if you're lucky, music of the spheres. Aww.